Go with me to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 22. We'll look at a parable here. And after that, once you've got your finger there, also go, let's go to another parable. Um, Luke chapter 14. So Matthew chapter 22, Luke chapter 14. Those are some scriptures we're going to start off with. And be prepared to follow with me as I move around with some scriptures and glory to God. And, Praise God. And receive what God has for you to receive today. Amen. This is exciting. I find it to be exciting. I trust that you are. Glory to God. The Bible says, look up. For what? For our redemption draws nigh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Praise God. God. Let's God. pray. Father, we give you the glory, we give you the praise. We want to say thank you so much for what you are doing in our midst of what you're about to do. I pray once again you quicken your word and make it real and relevant to every one of us here today. Let a fresh and only rest upon your people to hear your word, to receive your word. And I pray, Lord, you'd help us all to be truly doers of your word. Hallelujah. Let a fresh and only rest upon me as well. Think through my thoughts, speak through my vocal cords. Let your word go forth. Let it accomplish that which you have sent it to accomplish in every one of our lives and hearts. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory and the praise. And I thank you, Lord. You're always confirming your word with signs, wonders, and miracles. You said in your word, you'll watch over your word to perform it. Amen. And I thank you, Lord. Your word is yea and amen to them that believe. I give you the glory and I give you the praise. I pray Jesus will be exalted through this message. You will have your way on our hearts, in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God. amen. amen. Matthew chapter 22. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 22. Glory, 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 glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's a parable I'm going to read here, reading from verse 1. And it's a parable about, it's called, it's called the wedding feast. And uh, if, you, if you're not sure what a parable is, it's simply a story that is used to illustrate a moral or a spiritual lesson. So it's just to help illustrate a lesson. And, but yet there's a lot of truth to it because Jesus himself is speaking. So we do not want to ignore his parables because in his parables there are messages. In his parables there are revelations. In his parables he's communicating the best way he can how he wants to get some heavenly concepts over to human beings so that human beings can understand it and, uh, and, and, and comprehend. So in Matthew, Chapter 22, the word of God reads, verse 1, And Jesus answered and spake unto them again in parables, and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made marriage for his son. Well, if you think about this for a moment, you can think about who that son is. That son, I would say, is Jesus. And God the Father is the Father. And he's the one that wants to arrange a marriage for his son. Now, if you were to really read the Bible from the Genesis all the way to Revelations, you'll see that one of the themes, it's not the only theme, running through the Bible is this. It's God's desire to find a wife for his son. How about that? God's desire to find a wife for his son from get-go. And you see it through the different uh, passages of scriptures. Um, for example, we see Abraham. Abraham, there came a time when Abraham said to his servant, um, I want you to go back to where I came from and get a wife for my son Isaac. And you know what? He did. He went off and he brought back Rebekah to Isaac and he arranged that marriage. And Abraham was very much involved with it. And we see very much God the Father's that way too. And so we see how God is working through that. And you see all the other illustrations all throughout the Old Testament, coming in the New Testament. One of the themes is all about God getting a wife for his son. And we know who that is. It's a church. And that marriage, consummation of that marriage is coming up very soon. We're engaged. Glory to God. So that, 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 that will come about not too long from now. So we need to get excited and be prepared and make sure that we're, we, we are ready and prepared. We don't, want, we don't want to be caught off God like the five foolish virgins. That when the bridegroom came, uh, they were not ready. And uh, they went, the five that were ready went in with the groom. And the scripture says the door was closed. It was over. We don't want to be caught on that side of the, of the door. And the other side, oh Lord, Lord, let us in. You know, we've served you. We've taught Sunday school. We've preached the gospel. We've, we've handed out tracts. We've done all these wonderful things for the kingdom of God. No, 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 we want to be ready that when that trump sounds, glory to God, 
we are prepared and ready and excited to go in. In other words, we're looking forward to it. If you, I, I, you know, I can't speak for a female, but if she knows her wedding day is coming up, she should be getting excited about it. If she's not getting excited about it, something is wrong. Wouldn't you agree? I would tend to think so. Something would be wrong. But, so we should be getting excited about it. We should be anticipating. We should be uh, uh, looking forward to that glorious day. Looking up for our redemption draws nigh. Now, in the Jewish weddings, they didn't know the exact day when the wedding was going to take place. But the, the bride that was engaged, she was to prepare herself and remain in a ready state so that when that call came, she could drop everything and leave immediately. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So the scripture goes on to say, And he sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. And again, he sent again, sorry, and he sent forth other servants saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fat winds are killed, and all things are ready, on, come unto the marriage. There was an invitation, it was a plea. Hey, I'm having a wedding for my son. Come, 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 come. But they made light of it, is what the scripture says. And they went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. So whatever they were doing, the farm was more important than going to this marriage. The business was more important than going to this marriage and of the king. The king was having the marriage for his son. And verse 6 says, And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. Well, you know, if we look at the history, um, that's exactly what played out. John the Baptist came and preached the gospel. All the other prophets in the past came and preached the word of God. And many of them was, were, were slain, were, 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 were uh, um, persecuted. Some were killed. Some were put in jail. Some, the, all kinds of horrible things happened to them. And, uh, but yet they were true. They, they remained true to what God called them to do. But you know what? It did play out. It has played out. So what Jesus is telling in this parable is like, this, is a, this has happened. It's going on. And you know what? And it continues to go on. And in verse 7 it says, But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Well, if you look back in history, Jesus came unto his own. And you know what happened? The Bible says they rejected him. Did they not? That was approximately, Jesus started his ministry uh, 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 around, he was 30 years old when he started his ministry. And he prophesied that the walls and, of, and, and of, of uh, the temple will not one stone will remain upon another. Mm -hmm. Well, after he was crucified, he was crucified around 33 AD. 70 AD was not that very long. Yes. It came to pass. Jerusalem was burned, it was destroyed, it all played out. Mm -hmm. And so you could see some of this, that he was speaking in his parable was prophetic. If, when, you, when you understand what, 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 what he's saying, and it is played out already and continues to play out. Mm -hmm. So the scriptures goes on to say that um, in verse 8, Then says he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden or invited are not worthy. Mm -hmm. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. Yeah. That's you and I. Hallelujah. His own people rejected him. Hallelujah. And because his own people rejected him, the gospel now went to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And we now have an opportunity to, to uh, partake at this wedding. We now have the opportunity to partake of this heavenly banquet that's yes, coming up. Amen. We have an opportunity to get saved if we choose to. So, so um, this turned for our good when his own people rejected the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Messiah, and they were supposed to be married to him. You and I can now come in. Praise Glory God. to God. Hallelujah. But you know, saints, it's only for a time period. There's a start and a stop. Finish, yes. Hallelujah. There's a time period. And the, it's called the time of the Gentiles. And according to the scriptures, when you look at the scriptures, you understand the scriptures, and you uh, look what's going on in the world events, you can safely conclude that the time of the Gentiles is coming to a, fo a fast conclusion. Yes, amen. Right? It's yes. coming to a fast conclusion. It's not going to go on forever and ever and ever. Mm -hmm. and, 
And right now, the situation that this world is in, and particularly here in North America, you can you know we are going through a transition period. Yes, amen. So watch and pray. Amen. Pay attention to what is going on. Uh, to what's going on outside, to what God is doing, to what the scriptures are saying, the prophetic scriptures. Understand what's going on. If you don't understand, ask God to give you understanding. Ask questions. Um, get into the word of God. God will reveal it. He will open up to you. The other day I was, you know, last Bible study on Tuesday, we were talking about one, uh, about uh, the rapture. And uh, and in that, we uh, we were talking about the basics of understanding that theological concept. Yes. And I encourage you that if you're in doubt, if you need a confirmation, mm -hmm. if you're not sure, go to God in prayer and ask him about it Glorious. and and talk to him about it. And I trust that if you have any questions or doubt about it, you do it because God will show you that what he says in his word, he means exactly what he said. It is true what he's going to say. Yes, I, I, and uh, one, one shared with me not, um, just, just yesterday, they had a dream. Hallelujah. And God gave this individual a dream of the rapture. And I said, wow. And maybe this individual might want to share it, maybe today, tomorrow, in a testimony, as a person feels free to share it. But it was amazing as this person shared with me. And I said, wow, Lord, thank you for showing this individual what is going to happen. I'm telling you, yeah. Glory to God. It's all in the scripture sense. The rapture has to take place before we get married. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the church. Hallelujah. Today we're talking about marriage. Glory to God. The marriage comes after. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, let me read it again. Verse 9. Go ye out therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as as many as they found, both bad and good. Isn't that cool? Both bad and good. When, I, when we came into the Lord, we didn't come in looking good, did we? <laughs> Some of us were into some things we shouldn't have been. That's true. Some of us were into some deep sin. Some of us needed deep deliverance. Yeah. I know myself, I can speak for myself, I needed some deliverance. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. I, you know, and, 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 and I didn't experience all of that the, the, the first day when I got born again, when I gave my life to Jesus. Mm -hmm. As time went on, certain things were dropped off and the things of God became more real and relevant and important to me. It didn't happen instantaneously. I was saved instantaneously, but the experience of walking it out wasn't instantaneously. Right. I mean, if you've got some bad habits in your life, they don't just disappear just like that. I mean, for some people, they can. Now, I, I know Pastor uh, no, um, Brother Cliff, when he, he said when he got baptized, the day he got baptized, he quit smoking cold turkey that day. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. So what did happen? God gave him complete deliverance that day. Amen. And God can work that way since. But sometimes we have to walk it out. And through that process, great deliverance has been wrought. And I trust that's what's happening for you too as well. Amen. That you're, the, the closer you draw to God, the more you're going to drop off certain things. And the more you're going to take on the things of God. It's called sanctification. It's called holiness. It's called, an, it's called a, a, a holy walk with God. In other words, it takes time to be holy. Let God do that cleaning up. Let God do that work in your heart, in your life, that no one else can do. Amen. It doesn't happen. I mean, the day you get born again, you are considered holy. But from experience, it takes time. It takes, it, do you, you know, I'm just thinking, do you know how to pray automatically? No, not when you get born again. You have to learn how to pray, don't you? Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory. You got to learn how to pray the right way, too. Yes. Amen. 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 And you got to learn how to believe the right way, too. Mm -hmm. You gotta learn how to get your words and your confession right with the word of God. Amen. You gotta learn how to order your speech mm -hmm. so you're ensuring that only the words that God can be glorified and edified, pleasing, that produces faith and and it's coming out of your mouth and Amen. not ungodly speech. Yes. You know, um, you know, prior to being born again, some people's mouths didn't really belong to them. Mm -hmm. You know, they curse every second word with a curse word, and uh, you know, so. So now that we're born again and we're going forth with God, we allow the Holy Spirit to have his way in our lives and our lives are changed and being changed. We're going from glory to glory to glory to glory. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me get back to the text. Verse 9 says, Go ye therefore into the highways, as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highway and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests 
And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there was a man which had not on a wedding garment. This guy wasn't dressed properly. Amazing. We're going to come back to him in a moment. And he says unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to his servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And the, and the last verse says, Many are called, few are chosen. Many are called, few qualify. Many are called, there are few that are selected. All saints, the invitation went out to many. Yes. And the invitation is still going out to many today. I'm talking about salvation. I'm talking about the invitation to join God at his wedding banquet that he's going to have for his son. Amen. The invitation is still going out. Many are called, few are chosen. Make sure you're one of make sure that you are one of those folks that are chosen. Mm -hmm. In other words, to be chosen, you're going to have to choose to cho you're going to have to choose to follow the Lord. Amen. You're going to have to choose to do what is right. You're going to have to choose to allow Jesus to be the Lord of your life. You're going to have to choose to, uh, to yield your life to the Holy Spirit and let him have his way in your life. You're going to have to choose what? To take up your cross daily and follow him and learn to live a life of self-denial. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to make some choices. You know, the flesh isn't going to like it. I'm going to tell you that right now. The flesh is not going to like it. But you're going to have to make some choices and say, flesh, whether you like it or not, this is what we're going to do. Whether you like it or not, we're going to read the Bible today. Whether you like it or not, we're going to pray today. Whether you like it or not, we're going to pray and fast today. Whether you like it or not, we're going to seek God today. Whether you like it or not, we're going to go to church today. I mean, the, you, you know, like now. Whether you like it or not, God comes first. Amen. Whether you like it or not, hallelujah, as Joshua said, as for me and my house. We shall serve the Lord. This is the way it's going to be. So you, you, you got to make some conscious, conscious decisions. Hallelujah. Of what you're going to do. Daniel made a decision. He, he made a decision. I'm not going to eat the king's meat or drink the king's wine because I'm not going to allow myself to be defiled. He made a conscious decision. And so did his friends with him. There were others that did not make that decision. They thought, you know what? Daniel and his friends are really crazy. But Daniel knew what he knew. Mm -hmm. He knew that he wanted to keep himself. He did not want to defile himself. Yes. And, since, and that's what the message is about today. It's, not, it's, it's about keeping your garments. Mm -hmm. It's about keeping your wedding garments and not allowing them to be defiled, not allowing them to become spot, mm -hmm. spot or with blemishes or with wrinkles mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff. It, it's like watching and praying and maintaining mm -hmm. until the Lord comes. Amen. Whether he comes tomorrow, whether he comes next week, whether he comes next year, whatever. It's watching and maintaining. Whether he comes five years from now, I don't believe it will take that long. Glory to God, personally. I believe the time is, we're in that season. That's just my personal opinion. But whether or not, it doesn't matter. We, 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 uh, we make a decision. I'm going to live for God regardless. Whether I'm up in the mountaintop. I'm going to live for him. When I'm down in the valley, I'm going to live for him. When yes. the times are good, I'm going to live for him. When the times are difficult, I'm going to live for him. Mm -hmm. I'm going to serve him all the days of my life. That's, that's the kind of decision we need to make. Yes. And, and we need to be firm with that kind of decision. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. You know, go with me for a moment to uh, Luke. Luke chapter uh, uh, 14. We see here, um, there's uh, Jesus speaking. And he's sharing um, about a, a banquet. Luke chapter 14. And the scripture says, and you'll see the similarity between the one that we just read in Matthew chapter 22. Luke chapter uh, 14. I'm reading from um, verse 15, and the scripture says, And when one of them sat at meat with him, heard these things, you'll have to read the other verses prior to this to understand what was being discussed and said, he said unto them, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. 
So even this person that said this to Jesus knew something that there's a banquet coming up. Mm -hmm. He had enough knowledge to know this. Mm -hmm. And you know, listen to how Jesus responds. Then said he unto him, a certain man made a great supper and bade many. In other words, invited many. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is speaking another parable here. Mm -hmm. And sent his servant at supper time to say unto them that were bidden or invited, yes. come for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have brought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. So that piece of land that that individual bought was more important than going to the banquet. Mm -hmm. Oh, saints, we've got to identify the excuses we've been making that's hindering us from going forward in the things of God and put them aside. Okay? Nothing should be imp more important now than being focused on Jesus and Jesus alone. Amen. It needs to be a priority in your life, saints. Amen. If it's not a priority, start to make it a priority. Mm -hmm. It's not your job. You see what's happening in the economy. It's not about school. Mm -hmm. It's not about making money. Mm -hmm. It's not about a whole lot of things anymore. Okay? It's, it's, it's about focusing and making sure that you're focused on the proper priorities you ought to be focused on. Glory to God. God has no problem with you going and buying land or real estate if that's what you need to be doing or that's what the Lord is leading you to do. But don't put it first before the things of God. And then the next verse goes on to say, and another said, I have five yoke of oxen and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. There's another excuse. So these individuals have taken the invitation to the banquet lightly. It's the same story that Jesus is telling, the same parable as, as in Matthew chapter 22, but it's, take, it's just taken from a different approach. The one is about the wedding, this one is about a banquet. They both lead to a banquet. Amen. Glory Praise to God. God. They both lead to a banquet, a heavenly banquet. Yeah. Glory to God. And verse 20 says, and another said, I have married a wife, mm -hmm. and therefore I cannot come. That's no excuse. If you can't serve God with your wife, you shouldn't have married her. If you can't serve God with your husband, you shouldn't have married him. In other words, if you're going to get married, you better make sure that you're marrying a person that's on the same wavelength as you when it comes to faith. The Bible says don't be unequally yoked. That's what the Bible is very clear. Now, a lot of Christians are feeling very comfortable these days of violating the, 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 what the scriptures say. Then they're going to get themselves into trouble. And when they get themselves into trouble that way, they are really saying that my wife, my husband is more important than the things of God. Mm -hmm. No sense. I, I'm speaking to those of you who are married now. As much as you love your wife and your husband, and you should, according to the will of God and the word of God, uh, they should not come before God. Mm -hmm. God should come first place. Amen. Glory to God. And if you're engaged and you're about to get married, and if you see that this relationship is going to be such that God is not going to be first place. Uh, you need to be rethinking about the direction that you're going in. In other words, saints, the one guy said, I bought some land. Another one said, I bought some oxen, so I'm going to go plow up my land and all that kind of stuff. Another one said, get married. They're all excuses. And now you need to stop and think to yourself and ask, am I making excuses for not preparing to be at that heavenly banquet that's coming up not too long from now? Am I using excuses? Examine yourself. Search yourself. Hallelujah. Ask the Holy Spirit to, Holy Spirit, show me if I'm making excuses, if I'm allowing these things to come in my life, distractions to hinder me, make it reveal to me and show me so that I know what to do. So I know how to conduct myself. But you see now, Luke chapter 14 and Luke chapter 22, they're not that, sorry, Matthew chapter 22, they are, are, are really not that different. Um, both stories, people are making excuses for not going to the banquet. Now, we see the story back to Matthew chapter 22. We see this individual that comes in, and he's not dressed properly at all. I mean, he's wearing whatever he wants to wear. He's not dressed in wedding garments. And this was a great insult to the king, because 
back in all those old days when a king who was reigning over a kingdom and if he had a wedding and he invited folks to his wedding, he furnished everything, not only the food, but the clothes. Mm -hmm. He furnished garments for them to put on. Now, I know when you and I go to a wedding these days, you've got to wear your own clothes. <laughs> Nobody's buying clothes for you. I mean, the ones who are getting married, they're not pur purchasing clothes for you. I mean, if you're part of the wedding party, they might, you know, but sometimes that's even um, depending on the budget that the couple has when it comes to marriage. But Jesus is sharing this parable with the people that understand what goes on that when a king has a wedding and if it's for his son and if he's inviting guests, not only does he provide the food, not only does he provide the wine, but he provides the garments for those to wear at the wedding celebration. Mm -hmm. So the king comes in and sees this guy not dressed properly. He's shocked. Yeah. And he says, my friend, he's very gracious. And I said, call him a friend. And said, how is it you came in here like this? In other words, I provided for you. How is it you're dressed like this? How could this happen? And you know, the scripture says he was speechless. He, he had no words to say because he was without excuse. He, he was supposed to dress accordingly. You know, and, and for the occasion, I remember the, I, I remember many short, a, a couple years after when I moved to the city here in Kingston, um, I was invited to a wedding, uh, um, Pastor Faye at our workplace, uh, a fellow was having a wedding, someone was getting married from his staff and I went there and I was, I, when I went to the wedding, it was a huge church, a lot of people were there and I mean, this is back in the 80s, so we're still back, a bit of the old school and I arrived at the wedding and I saw this individual dressed inappropriately for the occasion. For me, it was inappropriately. You know what the person was wearing? Shorts. Now today, it doesn't matter today because people dress any way they want to. But back then, we were still being a little bit more conservative. I just, it just, I just, I was just kind of like flabbergasted. Said, wow, you're going to a wedding and you're dressed in shorts? You know, and sneakers and inappropriately for the wedding? I mean, that individual really didn't care. But saints, we've got to be careful for the wedding that's coming up, for the banquet that's coming up, the heavenly banquet, we can't just dress any way we no. want. Okay, We've got to be dressed in heavenly garments. We've got to be dressed up appropriately. And we know what happened to this individual. He was bound, he was tied up, he was cast out into outer darkness. That's permanent separation from God. In other words, since he went to hell. That's where he went. According to, you know, according to when we understand this. So, it was an insult to the king because the king uh, made provisions for everyone to have uh, garments on. He came in wearing his old raggedy clothes. And, and what Jesus is teaching here in this, in, the, in this particular parable in Matthew chapter 22, he's saying that basically our self-righteousness is not okay. We cannot use our own self-righteousness to get to heaven. Amen. It's got to be on God's terms and not his terms. And so we can't go about establishing our own way that we think the way it should be and think that we're going to make it to heaven and be, and be accepted in this heavenly banquet that's coming up. It's just not going to work. You know, so from the beginning, we, we, we know that uh, um, when Adam and Eve sinned, what, what did they do? They went off when they found themselves naked. You see, prior to finding themselves naked, they were clothed with light, glory. Amen. They didn't even know they were naked. They were so clothed with light. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And when they sinned, the Bible, you know, the Bible lets us know that the, their glory departed. It was the glory of God that was covering them. Amen. And what did they do? They went off and found some fig leaves and sewed it up and made themselves aprons to, aprons to cover up their nakedness. Mm -hmm. Well, they thought they were doing okay. God came along the scene and he said, no, that's not appropriate. You're trying to establish your own righteousness. Ah. And what, what, what does God do? Well, you know, let me just go back to you. I'll tell you in Genesis chapter 3, verse 7, you'll find it. The word of God says, And the eyes of them are opened, as Adam and Eve, and they, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Mm -hmm. And that was not acceptable to God. Because if you continue reading in verse 21, what do we see? We see... The word of God reads, says, unto Adam also and unto his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. 
he, being the king of kings, the lord of lords, the god of the entire universe, made provision for Adam and Eve to cover up their nakedness. Amen. He killed an animal, took the skins of the animal, and made sure they were covered properly. Mm -hmm. That's what God did. And he's expecting every one of us, if we can understand that, he's expecting every one of us to be clothed appropriately mm -hmm. at all times as a believer. True. Okay? It's not okay to be dressed in any way we want to. I'm talking spiritually speaking. I mean, I could go off in a tangent about how people dress today, but that's not what the purpose of this message is about. Okay? The message is what God is saying today. is telling us we need to ensure that our garments are clean, they're spotless, they're, 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 they're uh, the garments that He has provided for us, not us going about uh, wanting to establish our own righteousness. The book of Isaiah tells us that our own righteousness are as Fil uh, as filthy rags. That's the way God sees it. And so when this man is sitting in the presence of the wedding, dressed in his, the way he wants to, he thinks he should be dressed, it was a great offense to the king. And God is letting us know through this parable, we can't just be clothed spiritually any way we want to. Yes. We've got to be clothed with garments that have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. And not only have we be, to be clothed with garments that have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, but we, we have to maintain and ensure our garments remain spotless. No wrinkles, no blemishes. Remain blameless. Blameless means no fault. No wrinkles. Well, we know what wrinkles like is when I look at the Greek, it's like wrinkles in your face, cracks, folds in your garments. Spots that's telling us about um, being, being uh, soiled, being defiled. Mm -hmm. We are not to be defiled. We are not to be, allow ourselves to be soiled. And if for some reason you should become defiled, uh, then you run to God. Amen. You repent. Mm -hmm. You get along with God. And you ask God to forgive you mm -hmm. and to cleanse you and wash you. In other words, it's not okay to allow your garments to become soiled and they remain soiled. Mm -hmm. It is not okay, it's not acceptable, mm -hmm. okay? It's not once saved, always saved. Mm -hmm. I keep coming back to that because a lot of people are under that impression. I can live, when I give my life to Jesus, I can live any way I want to. I can live like a devil, I can live like an ungodly person, and when the time comes, when I leave this life, God will accept me just like that. It doesn't work that way. If the trump should blow, God will accept me just the way I am. It doesn't work that way. You gotta be living a clean and holy life for him to accept you. You gotta be dressed spiritually appropriately. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Book of Revelations uh, tells us that um, even the tribulation saints, even them, they have to have their garments washed in the blood of the Lamb. Glory to God. Go with me for a moment to Revelations chapter seven. Anybody that gets saved in the next dispensation, they are going to have to have their garments washed in the blood of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. They're going to have to have white robes, Amen. according to the scripture. Revelation chapter 7. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We, we, we see that the whiteness of their robes is, 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 is due, is, is, is a result of the blood of the Lamb being applied to their garments. Revelation chapter 7 verse 9 says, After this I beheld, this is John speaking, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, of all nations, kindreds, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes mm -hmm. and palms in their hands. So there's going to be a, God's going to get a great harvest that comes out of tribulation during those tribulation days. Yes. Okay? There's some people that's going to realize that when Jesus came for the church, he really does exist. Mm -hmm. They're going to realize that the disappearance of the church, mm -hmm. it, it is real, and what they were taught before, what they heard before, it is real, and some will realize, you know what? I, I, I'm going to live for God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. And, and it goes on to say in verse 14, same chapter, uh, 
the, the, the elder asked him, do you know who these people are? Do you, do you know what's going on here? And in verse 14 said, and he said unto him, sir, thou knowest. This is John responding to the question. And he said unto me, these are they which came out of great tribulation. Yes. Amen. So the great tribulation is the last three and a half years of the seven years of tribulation. And that's when the Antichrist is reigning fully. That's, that's when he has desecrated the temple in uh, the new temple that will be built in Israel on the, on the Temple Mount. That's when he will be persecuting the, 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 the Jews and um, great massacres will be taking place. And not only that, but the saints as well, the tribulation saints, those who give their life to Jesus. And he says, and, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Some things aren't going to change. If your garments are going to be washed and clean, it's going to be, have to be washed in the blood of the Lamb in this dispensation and in the next dispensation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. We are not to trust in our own righteousness. We are not to trust in going about establishing our own righteousness. We are to accept the righteousness that God the Father has provided for us. The book of uh, Philippians chapter 3 verse 9 reads like this. And he says, And be found in him not having our own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. The righteousness which is of God by faith. We're going to have to place our faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on Calvary when he died, rose again from the dead. Hallelujah. All what Jesus accomplished for us, we're going to have to place our faith in what he accomplished and what Jesus accomplished for you and myself. In other words, it's not time for us to be establishing our own righteousness. No. Uh, we shouldn't be. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. God. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. You, oh, glory to God. And, and, glory to God. Um, glory to God. And so we're going to have to come to the cross, saints. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 6, He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. We're going to have to go via the cross to have the God kind of righteousness. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's the way it is. That's the way it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Go with me for, since we're in Revelations for a moment, go with me to uh, Revelations chapter 3. Revelations chapter 3 for a moment. One of the seven churches here is called Sardis. And Jesus had something to say to all seven churches. This particular church, in, in, in the Sardis, you'll see Revelations chapter 3, you will see that well, let, let me read from verse 1. I'm going to read it to verse, from verse 1 to 5. Just follow with me. It says, And unto the angel of the church of Sardis write, These things saith he that has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful. So we, we're, we're encouraged to continue to be watchful. Yeah. Right? Okay. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. This is Jesus speaking to this particular church. And Jesus is saying the same thing to some of us today. I haven't found you to be perfect the way you ought to be. And none of us should be entertaining any secret sins or secret things that we know that's not right. Let's just get, let's be transparent with God all the way. So that he doesn't have to be saying these words. Verse 3 says, Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. And we know from Thessalonians chapter, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, that when Jesus shows up, and if he sho when he shows up, and if he comes as a thief, it's because you're not ready and prepared. Yes. Yes. All right? He's a thief for those who are not ready. Mm -hmm. Jesus is not a thief, but he will appear as a thief. In other words, they will be surprised. Mm -hmm. And in that same chapter where we left off in our last Bible study, you're not supposed to be surprised. You're not supposed to be surprised. If you're a believer, you are to be a child of the light. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. 
That's what the Bible says. So you shouldn't be surprised. Hallelujah. So Jesus warning this church, don't let me have to surprise you because if I have to surprise you, it'd be like a thief. Glory to God. Verse 4 says, here's where I'm headed. For thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. So as we overcome in this life, in the next life, we will be clothed in white raiment. When you look at the Greek for this white, it means light. In other words, God is going to take us back to the way it used to be. Hallelujah. See these things we're clothed with? We're not going to be clothed with that in heaven. It's going to be, we're going to be clothed with light. Mm -hmm. Book of Daniel tells us, it tells us that um, in chapter 12, I believe, anyway, in those last chapters, it tells us that um, there's going to come a time when the righteous will shine forth and some will be brighter than others. I'm talking about that in the in the eternity. In other words, we're going to be like stars. We're going to be shining. Amen. So all of, all of our lights are not going to be the same. It'll determine. It, that'll all depend on how you and I serve God in this life. Hallelujah. How we how close we are to Him. Yeah. But we'll be shining. So when I go back to this verse, it says, "He that overcomes the same shall be clothed in white raiment." In other words, that white is speaking of a light, a brightness, mm -hmm. and I will not blot out His name. Out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. So this is God's message, Jesus' message to the church of Sardis. He said, um, uh, you need to strengthen what needs to be strengthened. Whatever is weak, you need to get right with me. Repent where you need to be repent. And the one who overcomes will be clothed, hallelujah, in white. Amen. Oh, glory to God. God. Hallelujah. Uh, glorious um, garments. Heavenly, glorious garments. Amen. Glory to God. God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, oh, glory to God. God. Hallelujah. Go with me again to Revelation chapter uh, 16 for a moment. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 16. This might be the first time for some of you looking at the book of Revelations. I know some people are scared to read this book. You should not be scared to read the book of Revelation. It's there for a reason, there for a purpose. The Bible says, you know what? Like no other book in the Bible, the 66 books in the Bible, this particular one, just by reading it, you put yourself in a position to be blessed. Yes. Is that cool or what? Yes. I think it is. Yes. Glory to God. Revelation chapter 16, verse 15. This is what it says here. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth. Back to that word watching. Every one of us should be watching. Okay, we're all called to be watchmen and watchwomen. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. Least he, sh least he walk naked and they see his shame. When Adam and Eve messed up, their glory departed and they were naked. God is saying, blessed is he who's watching, glory to God, God. and keeps his garments. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is encouraging us today to ensure you keep your garments. Again, go with me. Hallelujah. The Revelations chapter 19. Glory to God. Revelations chapter 19. The word of God says here, I'm going to give you a second to go there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 19. I'm reading a few verses here from verse 7. It says, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come. This is the banquet that we just read about in Luke chapter 14. This is the marriage that we just read about in Matthew chapter 22. Yes. There's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an end state for this sense. Mm -hmm. it, it's all leading to something. And it says, let us be glad and rejoice and honor him for the marriage of the Lamb is come. 
and his wife has made herself ready. Oh, glory to God. His wife has what? Made herself ready. Saints, it's our responsibility to make ourselves ready. Yeah. Again, it's back to this, what I'm saying. It's not one safe, I always say that you can live any way you want to. You've got a responsibility. You've got to make yourself ready. You've got to prepare yourself. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 8 says, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. Mm -hmm. In other words, this is the light. This is the brightness that God is going to close us with. I mean, he's using earthly language to describe what it's going to be like. But it's, it's light. Hallelujah. Amen. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. That's why we can't go around establishing our own righteousness, doing our own thing. We've got to be in right standing with God Amen. and do things His way for it to be well with us, so that we're clothed with righteousness. Our garments, uh, the, the, the Bible is saying that our, 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 our garments are, are fine linen. It's the righteousness of the saints. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The next verse says, And he says unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he says unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Yes. Oh, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. These will come to pass. Yes. So I'd like to encourage you, let these, these uh, biblical truths sink deep into your spirit, into your heart today. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible in the New Testament tells us how we can prevent ourselves from becoming defiled. If you go with me again to Ephesians chapter 4 for a moment. Notice today, uh, um, it's more pointing to the scriptures today. And, and sometimes we just need that. So that you can see them black and white or red and white. That the, the truth that the Bible says, and hopefully by us looking at these scriptures, it encourages you to want to read them for yourself and read the scriptures before and after for yourself. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Ephesians um, chapter 4 gives us some examples how we what we can do to prevent our garments from being defiled. You know, defiled means to be soiled, right? It says in verse 24, and that you put on a new man. Well, if you're born again, put on a new man, right? Walk in the newness of, of the new man. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. If, if you're born again, don't live like you're not born again. Mm. Glory to God. Truly be the Christian God's called you to be. Put on a new man, Amen. which after God is created in, here it is again, in righteousness and true holiness. Mm -hmm. Before putting up, wherefore, putting no away lying. In other words, if you tell lies, you're defiling your garments. Yeah. So just say, I'm not, that's not going to be part of me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and sin not. In other words, don't allow your anger to cause you to sin. Yeah. Because if you allow your anger to cause you to sin, You've defiled your garments. Yes. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. In other words, if you get angry in the middle of the day at your wife or your husband, make your peace before you go to sleep. You get angry, upset with somebody, really upset with them, make your peace before you go to bed. This is what the scripture says. Be you know, um, neither give place to the devil because if you don't settle it within that, that daytime and you go to sleep on it, the enemy has had some time to work on you. And by the time you wake up the next day, you are, you, you are, it's, it's much more difficult. There's a stronghold the enemy is building in your life. And it's going to be much more difficult to pull that down, to, to deal with it. So um, just don't go there. Just make it a, a, a rule for yourself and say, you know what? I'm not going to allow myself to go to sleep angry or in wrath at anybody. Not at my wife, not at my husband, not at my children. I'm just not going to, period. Glory to God. Verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more, but let him rather, but, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have good, so that he may have 
to give to him that needeth. Verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. So don't let profanity come out of your mouth. Don't let curses come out of your mouth. Don't let doubt and unbelief come out of your mouth. Don't be putting people down when you don't need to. Don't. In other words, watch what's coming out of your mouth. It's, it's, ask God to set a guard over your mouth. The, the Bible is very clear. It tells us that out of the abundance of the heart, whatever you're full of, that's what's going to come out. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Again, the Bible tells us that it's not eating with unwashed hands is what defiles a person. It's what's in the heart. It's what's in the heart. And, what, and, it, and you can know what's in the heart because it's, it's going to come out. Sooner or later, it's going to come out. It's, it's, going to, it's going to betray you. It's going to reveal what's going on. So if you're an agitated individual, you've got to check yourself. Don't look at other people. Look at yourself and say, well, there's something bothering me. You're going to have to ask the Holy Ghost to help you to get rid of that, whatever it is. Everyone hearing what I'm saying today? Yes. Okay. Yes. In other words, we got to, with the Holy Spirit's help, look within. We're talking about garments, right? When we allow corrupt communication to come out of our mouth, we are defiling our garments. Yes. When we allow ourselves to, to lie and tell lies and, and, and allow ourselves to go to sleep in anger and remain in anger or allow our anger to cause us to sin, yes. we are defiling our garments. So what is God saying to us today? We can take some practical steps mm -hmm. to ensure that our garments remain clean, spotless, blameless, without blemish, without wrinkles. We, we can, in other words, we've got a role to play, saints. Holy Spirit will do His part. God will do His part. Work it, but we've got to cooperate with Him. He says, uh, verse 30, Grieve not the Spirit of God. Well, you know what it says? If you grieve in the Holy Spirit, you're going to be defiling your garments. You cannot, def you, you cannot grieve the Holy Spirit and not defile your garments. It doesn't work that way. And, and it goes on to say, whereby we're sealed unto the day of redemption. Mm -hmm. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, and clamor. You know, some people are just argumentative. They get up in the morning and they all want to argue and fight all day long. They've got a contentious spirit. Mm -hmm. They're looking to find fault. They're picking on. They, they, everything just bothers them and they're... It saints, if you're like that, you're going to have to go to God. I said, God, help me, deliver me. I don't want to be like this. Okay? Uh, what, what is God saying? Don't be comfortable being that way. Don't be comfortable being, uh, than having an argumentative, contentious spirit. A fighting spirit that you want to fight with everybody you come in contact with. You find fault with everything and everybody. You've got a critical spirit. No, 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 no. All this defiles your garments. And this is where you and I have to take responsibility to ensure that our garments are not going to be defiled. Mm -hmm. Amen. Glory to God. You can't do it on your own. You're going to need the help of the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes. You're going to have to be into the Word of God. So let me finish reading that verse. It's verse 31. It says, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. It says, Be kind one to another. Tender-hearted, hallelujah! That we're called to be tender-hearted saints. Yes. Every one of us is called to be tender-hearted. Mm -hmm. We're called to be gentle with each other. Mm -hmm. We're called to be patient with each other. Mm -hmm. Amen. If if the, it's it's you could go to ask the Holy Spirit to help you to exhibit that. Mm -hmm. All right, Praise forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Yeah. Be quick to forgive. Mm -hmm. Don't hold a long list of faults against another person. Be quick to forgive and forget and move on. Hallelujah. The Word of God tells us in Colossians chapter 3, if you, if you want to follow me, I'll just read it to you. Again, in Colossians chapter 3, Paul the Apostle writes in verse 10, he says, put on a new man. There it is again. Hallelujah. We just saw it in Ephesians. He says, uh, put on a new man. Put on a new man. Who's the new man? The born again you. Amen. Walk in the born again you, if that makes sense. In other words, acknowledge that you're born again, you're changed, you're transformed. I mean, you're a work in progress. God is doing that work in you. But walk in it. So he says here in Colossians chapter 3 verse 10, Put on a new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, Holy and beloved bowels of mercies, kindness, 
humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. Yeah. Hallelujah. Forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. These are some of the practical things that God is telling us, saints, that we can do, we can exercise, hallelujah, with God's help, to help us, hallelujah, keep our garments spotless, mm -hmm. keep our garments wrinkle-free, praise God, hallelujah, <laughs> and keep ourselves blameless. Yes. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, saints, I'm going to uh, close with this. Go with me to Esther for one brief moment. Esther, the Bible says many are called and few are chosen. And uh, in the days of Esther and Mordecai, when they were in captivity in uh, Persia, the king had a wife. The king of Persia had a wife, and his, her name was Vashti. And uh, she fell out of favor with him. And uh, so his counselors uh, encouraged him to go get himself another wife. They encouraged him to divorce her and put her away, remove her from being the queen, and to uh, gather up all the good, beautiful, fair virgins. The King James says fair, but in modern language, all the beautiful, good-looking women that are virgins, gather them all up to the palace and select himself a wife. And that's exactly what he did. In Esther chapter 2, the Bible tells us here in Verse 8, so it came to pass when the king's commandment and his decree was heard that when many maidens were gathered together unto Shushan, the palace, to the custody of Hegai, that Esther was brought also unto the king's house to the custody of Hegai, keeper of the women. And the word of God goes on to tell us in verse 9, and the maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness of him, and he speedily gave her her things for purification. Notice this, she has to get ready if she's going to meet the king. Yes. Which such things as belong to her and seven maidens. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So she had seven maidens helping her. Mm -hmm. And when I think about this, it reminds me of the Holy Spirit, seven spirits, that's according to the word of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God, which were meet to be given her out of the king's house, and he preferred her and her maids unto the best place of the house of the women. So she got the best place to stay. And she kept this all a secret of who she really was. And the Bible says in verse 12, it says, Now when every maid's turn was come to go into the king Ahasuerus, after that she had been twelve months according to the man of the women, for so were the days of her purification accomplished, to wit six months with oil of myrrh, six months of sweet odors, hallelujah, and with other things for purifying of the women. So she went through this process, this purification process. And after 12 months later of perfuming up herself and, um, uh, you, you know, and taking care of herself and preparing, the time came for her to go before the king. Now, mind you, probably hundreds had gone before her, but many are called, few are chosen. True. The king didn't see what he was looking for in any of the ones that went before her. And the scripture tells us that when she, when her turn came, she went, and uh, you'll see this in verse uh, uh, 15. It says, now, when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had 
taken her for his daughter, was come to go into the king, she required nothing but what Hagar, the king Chamberlain, the keeper of the woman, appointed, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. So Esther was taken unto the king Hazarus, unto his house royal in the tenth month, which is the month of Tibet, in the seventh year of his reign. And the king loved Esther above all women. And she obtained grace and favor. Are we obtaining grace today? Absolutely, Amen. saints. We ob she obtained grace and favor. Is favor available for us today? Absolutely. In the sight of, sorry, in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Oh, saints. Jesus is about, God is about to do that for Jesus. Yeah. He's, he's going he's, he's gonna to get his bride. Yes. Glory to God. A holy bride. Mm -hmm. One is spotless, no wrinkles, no blemishes. Mm -hmm. One that has prepared herself, as we just read in Revelation 19, that the time came when his wife had made, had made herself ready. Because she had made herself ready, the time came for the marriage to take place. Yes. For the marriage to be consummated. All oh, glory to God. And saints, that's what God's calling you and I to do. He's calling us to that heavenly banquet. He's calling us to that marriage feast in heaven. He's calling us to be part of all of that. But we've got to do our part and prepare ourselves. In other words, we've got to choose, make a conscious decision, I'm going to be part of that so that we can end up being chosen. Glory to God. In other words, we can be, end up um, being counted worthy to escape what's coming and stand before the Son of God with confidence, with boldness, Glory to God, with joy, with great joy. Mm. Glory to God. And not being found naked spiritually right. or physically. Right. We are clothed properly. We are dressed properly. We've got our uh, wedding garments yeah. on. Praise Glory to God. We're decked out. Mm. Glory to God. We're not wearing shabby clothes. We're, we are, we're, we're not uh, uh, doing our own thing. Mm. Glory to God. We are dressed gloriously because the scriptures tells us that Jesus in the book of Ephesians, he tells us that he wants to present a glorious church unto himself. Hallelujah. You'll find it in Ephesians chapter five, a glorious church. We are going to be glorified. We are going to be looking good. Every one of us individually and collectively. It is going to be awesome. And that verse I was mentioning to you as I'm wrapping up now in the book of Daniel, the scripture tells us, if, again, if you, wanna, if you want to uh, uh, see for yourself, in Daniel chapter 12, the scripture says in verse 2, Hallelujah. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Verse 3 says, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Praise Glory to God. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. And the angel told Daniel to shut the books because, uh, you know, there's a time when it's going to come. Let me just read that verse 4. But thou, o Daniel, shut up the words, seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro. Knowledge shall be increased. We're living in that time. Many are going to and fro. Saints, God is calling us to shine. Hallelujah. He's calling us and says, keep your garments clean until I come for you. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Make sure you're washed in the blood of the Lamb. Don't allow yourself to be stained, defiled, wrinkled. Don't allow spots to come on you. Amen. Live right. Live holy. Live clean. Live pure to your best your ability with the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God. Because the ones that keep the garments, there's a reward. Mm -hmm. And the reward is we get to go to the banquet, we get to be at the marriage supper, we get to marry Jesus, we get to participate in all that, we get glorious heavenly garments, we're going to be shining like the stars, Praise brighter than the natural stars, God. the physical stars. Glory to God. It's exciting sights. And therefore, I really believe God would want to encourage you today is to consider your garments, that you're keeping them clean. 
Amen. So let me leave that with you. Praise. Hallelujah. Receive, walk in it, and be encouraged in the, in the name of the Lord. Praise God. We are going to close in prayer. Hallelujah. Once again, Father, I pray that the truth of your words that we've heard today will sink deep into the hearts of every one of us. I pray, Lord, you perfect that which concerns us. Where we're weak, I pray you help us to take the steps and identify and strengthen where we're weak. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would help us to keep our garments spotless and clean. There was only a few in Sardis that had the garments spotless. But I pray, Father, you would help every one of us to keep our garments spotless and clean right up until the time you come for us. Help us to be mindful of this, Heavenly Father. Cause these, the truth of your words, the, the significance of your words to sink deep into our spirits and become part of us and that we'll be conscious to want to do that. We'll do our part and what we can't do, I know you will do. In Jesus' name. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.